Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to this online course on legal language, legal including general English. This is lecture 13 and I am Dr. Divya Gupta, an assistant professor at GLA University, Matra, and today we are going to begin with terms used in civil law and criminal law. Most of the time we think that almost the same kind of terms would be used in all the type of legal writings and in civil law. Where, where, whether it is civil law or criminal law. But my dear learners, there is a big difference between the uh, terms that are used in both the cases. So, I would like to first of all ponder on this, uh, your, draw your attention towards this aspect that there is uh, like when we talk about civil law that is quite different and on the other hand criminal law is also very much different. Now, let me talk about a little bit about their difference. Civil law is the law that is uh, that or a case that actually uh, leads towards the allegation of an individual towards an individual or maybe towards a firm uh, when that person is humiliated or may be hurt by some kind of behavior. On the other hand, criminal laws, yes, of course, that would be the violation of code and conduct. Now, in this condition, you have to be very much perfect and uh, while defining and distinct and creating a distinction between a separate, uh, you can say a group of terms where you can say that this one could be used for civil uh, law and the other terms that could be used for criminal law. So, with this note, we shall move further towards the learning outcomes, my dear learners. When you learn these things, what are the outcomes? What or how many things you are going to learn. So, the first thing that you are going to learn is an explanation. All these lectures like throughout this lecture when you go through it, you would learn the explanation to the commonalities between civil law and criminal law. Of course, you will find a kind of common traits as well in both the laws. Further, you would try to come up with the comparison in legal terminologies, whether it is civil or criminal, along with the glossary. Yes, you can definitely see to it. Further, you will find the differences in their purpose, in their procedure and in the terminology of each branch of law. Yes, you would be able to differentiate between them. So, the purpose, point number one, then procedure and on the basis of that, their objectives will change and their legal terminologies will change. So, these are few learning outcomes of this particular lecture. In our previous lecture, my dear learners, you all have learned about the history of language, legal language. You have understood about the history of Indian legal language and then how this uh, language leads towards the active listening, passive listening. And in the coming lectures, upcoming lectures, you would learn that how you can definitely use these statutes, regulations, you can use the acts. You can use fundamental rights in order to make your work more authentic and more impressive. So, with this note, we will move further towards the outcomes. We have already done the outcomes. Now, we are going to move towards the content. So, what are the things that we have, uh, we are going to cover in this lecture? First of all, the introduction. You will learn how to, like what is the difference between or what do you mean by these terminologies when it comes to civil law and when it comes to uh, criminal law. Then you would definitely, yes, comparative study of all the laws, constitutional laws as well. Then we are going to use the terms specific category for civil law, other ca category for criminal law and then last but not the least commonalities between them. You cannot segregate each and everything or you cannot keep them in different boxes. They are almost interlinked. So, yes, we are going to learn all these things in these lectures in the whole uh, lecture. Now, further we, we are going to deal with uh, what do you mean by first of all civil law. 
when it comes to civil law now you have to understand that civil law codifies it codifies a set of a set of rules that that basically deal with deal with the behavior as i told you this is the civil law it will deal with the behavior of any individual of any individual or maybe an individual or organization organization when it affects that that can cause that can cause the injury that is civil law right so there is a kind of injury whereas when it goes to criminal law that is quite different and remember that in civil law an individual could be hurt or maybe a firm could be hurt right an industry could be uh, like uh, hurt the plaintiff could be on that that side like we have plaintiff and on the other hand we have defendant defendant so now you have to understand that the other one is if i say general general law revo- resolves the conflict the conflict between two organization that i told you about it it will resolve the issues between two organizations or individuals right for example if i say defamation defamation like uh, sometimes labeling someone sometimes slander sometimes breach of contract also will come in this thing breach of contract will come in this thing so these are few important points sometimes negligence negligence right others maybe all these things would lead towards the towards the kind of crime or there is a specific law that is civil law against which you can by using that law you can definitely complain you can against uh, you can file a sue or you can uh, file a complaint against anyone so these are th- these all things come in the category of civil law now when it comes to criminal you have to understand when it comes to criminal category criminal will always uh, approach somebody criminal will always approach somebody that talks about that talks about behavior behavior basically that can constitute an offensive offensive and which affects the public sometimes society or it will support land maybe like uh, it could definitely be offensive in such a manner which may lead to injury big injury or murder maybe theft so these things divorce so these all things come in the category of criminal law now criminal law deals with the offense that is uh, that are committed against the society this is the most important thing you must understand crime committed against the society right so basic difference between civil law and criminal law civil law is basically against the individual and maybe some firm or industry but this criminal law is actually against the society so this you have to understand the basic difference between them right now on the basis of that we'll move further towards their understanding part their purpose what is their objectives how it is fought like what are the what is the procedure of going through case laws and sometimes civil laws sometimes this criminal laws so basically firs are there and crpc crpc this plays a very important role because it has made some rules for any kind of crime when there is a kind of crime where, which is serious type of crime and the other one is non serious in serious crime obviously they will go for fir and in that condition first information report is there where the whole case is heard in the court 
whereas the non serious they file they definitely uh, create an application and then send it to magistrate because without the permission of magistrate they cannot actually resolve any issue yes so yes we are going to discuss the other things also in the uh, upcoming slides so let's move further and understand the procedure the objectives and rest of the things so let's take up the criminal law first of all what is criminal law as i have already given you uh, you can see the glimpse of everything yeah the glimpse of criminal law and the glimpse of uh, this uh, civil law but now you have to understand it in depth that what are these criminal law how which are the activities that come in this uh, whole thing so what is the purpose the aim of it so what is the aim of it criminal law is concerned with regulating and put punishing behavior that society deems as harmful or unlawful that is most important thing harmful and unlawful right its primary purpose is to maintain public order since i told you that it will affect the society it will certainly affect the society so you must keep in mind that public order protect individual property i told you land murder murder mystery most of the time or maybe theft there are many many cases divorce cases also they will come in family court and seek justice through the punishment of offenders understood everyone so these these this is the purpose of having these criminal law please be very much considered we focus on this aspect that criminal law will hurt the society and on the other hand society land dispute sometimes murder sometimes mystery some kind of theft so all these things come in this category then we talk about procedure how this criminal law is fought what is the procedural of procedural to go through this criminal law case in criminal law the government prosecution charges an individual charges are you getting it charges an individual with a crime that means an allegation is there and the accused is presumed innocent until proven guilty yeah so accused is guilt uh, presumed innocent until proven guilty beyond the reasonable doubt in court so this is like please try to use the legal maxims also whenever where whenever there is necessary okay so legal writing in criminal law involves drafting complaints indictments and briefs often using formal language citations and relevant statutes and why what is the need of statutes and case laws because on the basis of those statutes and case laws you would be able to understand the framework on which these this new case can be fought right if there is some kind of case for example if i if i am going to quote one case gopalan gopalan versus state of state of madras this case was 1950 and this was the court upheld the validity of preventive detention act and in this that detention act in 1950 with the exception of section 14 with the exception of section 14 which restricted the disclosure of the grounds of detention which is deemed unconstitutional so this is particularly the crime this is the constitutional so this is actually the latest uh, or you can say the recent criminal law criminal case i should say criminal case that i should say in this category where people where this uh, gopalan versus state of madras was uh, there was an allegation on this and therefore like it is it comes in the category of criminal law there are few more cases like the same Uh, thing and the terminologies that are used in it, the terms that are used in it, legal terminologies, legal maxims, legal words, and which are they? Like, look at them: defendant, plaintiff, one who complains against somebody. Defendant is someone who actually uh, who is the accused, then prosecutor, then accused, bail, plea, bargain, then guilty verdict and sentencing. So these are few. terminologies which we can use in the criminal law category right so defendant 
plaintiff, accused, sometimes we talk about the plea, bargain, bail, then guilty verdict, other times we can definitely talk about the sentencing also because in this kind of like uh, uh, you can yeah, definitely the people or the accused could be sent behind the bars also, the defendant can be could be sent behind the bars also. So, there is a death sentence or maybe some kind of like uh, uh, for, for 4 years or 5 years uh, prison, imprisonment, imprisonment, so could be like that. So, remember these things are important when it we talk about criminal law. Then further we talk about civil law, as if I told you that civil law is an individual against individual, sometimes an a firm against individual or uh, vice versa. So, what is the purpose of this criminal law, civil law sorry. So, civil law deals with disputes between individuals, organizations or entities. As I explained you earlier regarding their rights, what are these? The, the, yes, of course, rights number one, second one you may talk about obligations, you may talk about liabilities, right. So, these are few things which you have to understand liabilities, right. So, these are primary purpose of coming up with civil law, civil cases because it provides a mechanism for resolving these disputes and compensating the injured party. So, a kind of compensation could be there sometimes and other times yes, uh, in while resolving these issues maybe there was a, there would be a kind of consultancy or maybe somebody would try to come up for uh, the kind of like uh, sometimes creating the negotiation part, talking about negotiations between two parties. So, that could be done on the basis of legal uh, methodological manner. Yes, so what would be the procedure of it? We have seen the purpose. Now, second part is procedure. How are we going to deal with it? Procedure in civil law, one party plaintiff. I told you the, the person who is going to file a complaint that is plaintiff initiates a lawsuit against another party, the defendant, right? The defendant. Legal writing in civil law involves drafting complaints, petitions, motions and legal briefs. So, what are the things that are involved? Like you are going to draft a complaint in the form of application sometimes. In the form of application you are going to draft a complaint, right? Another times, yes I told you that in, uh, in criminal law you file uh, the, the police officer is going to create or draft a, an FIR. Whereas, when it comes to civil law that will be an application. And after that application remember petition is there. Your application would be sent to magistrate many times to, to be resolved at that level only and then motions, sometimes motions, sometimes legal briefs, all these things could be divided, could be used as a procedure. Then it often emphasizes clarity and persuasive arguments, clear and persuasive arguments to support plaintiff's claims or defendant's defense. So, there has to be a kind of like there is no like uh, seriousness less serious than criminal law. Yes, let us talk about the terminologies. We have plaintiff, defendant, complaint, petition, this is something new, petition, judgment, damages, breach of contract and tort, right. So, these are few terminologies and what are this uh, the new one? Yes, plaintiff and defendant both there would be plaintiff and defendant in both the cases, whether it would be uh, criminal law or uh, civil law, yeah and uh, complaint would be filed further, petition is there, petition is a new that would be uh, to civil law and then judgment and then sometimes uh, breach of contract and uh, tort. So, these things would come in the category of this aspect. With civil law, yes, now you have got the understanding that how civil law is different with criminal law. Third one is constitutional law. So, let us discuss about that one also. What is constitutional law? As the term itself suggests that which changes the constitution or which affects the constitution, yeah. So, in that condition whenever any kind of article is used as an statute or maybe sometimes article 15 or uh, maybe any kind of article section. So, in that condition constitutional law could be used. Now, let us see what is the purpose of it? Constitutional law deals with the interpretation and application of country's constitution. Right. So, we are going to interpret, like suppose somebody has interpreted the uh, country's constitution in a different manner, that will certainly be a different aspect. 
then its primary purpose is to define the structure of government, protect individual rights and establish the legal framework for the functioning of the state. So, in that condition the functioning of the state is decided on the basis of this aspect. Now, in this condition I would like to tell you one recent case which is really relevant nowadays like the recent case uh, related to that constitution would be uh, D. P. Joshi, let me write it over here, D. P. Joshi. Now, in this condition D. P. Joshi, if I say D. P. Joshi versus state of Madhya Bharat. Now, this is something very much relevant where the medical, the reservation, the reservation in medical and engineering colleges, colleges. So, this is the law, this is the case which you can say this is the case law which happened or which took place on the basis of reservation in medical and engineering college where this uh, complainant you can say plaintiff uh, stood against the state of Madhya Bharat where she said that where this uh, plaintiff I should not say she or he where the plaintiff actually complained against removing this or changing this uh, system of reservation in this uh, medical and engineering colleges through uh, through through the certain branches you can say through certain uh, specific specific liberation given on the basis of given on the basis of caste sometimes and creed or race so this is article 15 it was against article 15, I am using it once again, article 15 section 1 of the Indian constitution when it says that which prohibits, let me write it, which prohibits the discrimination based on various grounds right. So, this was the college for candidates from backward classes was challenged against this, was challenged against article 15. So, this was something related to the constitution, somebody was challenging, the plaintiff was challenging the system that is actually there. So, this is whole constitutional law, when somebody stands or somebody interprets it in a very different manner, it could be used. So, protect individual rights and legal framework for the functioning of the state. Have you understood everyone? So, somewhere changing or interpreting in a different manner to make it more appealing and more convincing for us. Let us see the what is the procedure. Constitutional law often involves cases brought before higher courts to determine the constitutionality of laws or government actions. Whatever government has taken, the actions that government has taken, it will definitely deal with all those things. And Legal writings in constitutional law includes briefs, petitions, opinions. Sometimes we use legal, sometimes legal scholars also write research work, writes research. Now, in this condition, they, are, they create this research work which proves it as an inspiration for all others, you, you can say, that analyze constitutional provision, precedent and legal doctrines. They analyze them, legal, analyze those legal doctrines, they analyze those precedent and those provisions and come with their own interpretation, right. So, this is really very much important. Now, in this condition, let us move up towards the terminology side. When it comes to terminologies, yes, of course, moreover, some part of it would, some terminologies will remain, uh, remain same. Plaintiff, defendant would always be there. Somebody would would be the plaintiff playing the role of plaintiff or maybe like approaching somebody and uh, like uh, you can say is, is an applicant and the other one would be the defendant. Now, what other terms could be used in this? So, let us see in this legal writing constitutional, constitutionality, due process, 
equal protection, separation of powers, first amendment rights, judicial review and precedent. So, these are few terminologies which are very much different from criminal law and from case laws, right? from criminal law and civil law. So, with this note, I think this has created the proper segregation, proper boxes of these three cases where civil law is there, then uh, criminal law is there and the third one constitutional law. Some amendment that we are going to try, we, we, we try to bring about in the whole scenario. So, that would be in such case. So, let us move up to the next part that is terms used in civil law. Yes, of course. Uh, we have already discussed them earlier that which are the terminologies used in this, but now we are going to use and see the application part also. Which are the terms that could be used in civil law, sometimes in criminal laws and the other laws as well. So, first of all, this is my favorite plaintiff and defendant. Yes, there would be these two things, plaintiff one who is complaining, filing a case against and defendant filing a case against defendant. So, one party plaintiff and the other party would be defendant. So, let us see the example Ellis, the plaintiff is suing the construction company for damages resulting from the breach of contract. Yeah. So, she might have maybe uh, broken or just uh, uh, overcome the contract or maybe uh, not followed the rules that were there in contract. So, breach of contract and therefore, the plaintiff is suing the construction company. So, Alice versus RK Industries could be like that. Yeah. So, that is plaintiff, right. In this case, who is the defendant? RK Industries. Is that clear? So, the party against whom civil lawsuit is filed is required to respond to the allegation. Their XYZ corporation, the defendant denies the plaintiff's complaint of negligence in the product design. So, suppose ABC has, uh, has filed a suit against, against uh, uh, XYZ. So, ABC is the plaintiff and uh, XYZ is the, uh, is the defendant who is going to reply uh, to this person. Third one, damages. Damages could be in the form of monetary terms, monetary compensation uh, wanted awarded to the plaintiff. Suppose there is a kind of like, um, uh, uh, like you can say the construction error, maybe some kind of like building error. So, in that condition, there would be a kind of compensation would be given by that company. So, monetary compensation to the plaintiff to compensate for losses or injuries. For example, let us see the court award Sara rupees uh, 20,000 in damages of medical bills and lost wage, wages. Tort, now tort of laws, you might have heard about this thing many times, a wrongful act, something, some, some wrong act that is known as tort or negligence that causes harm to another person or of their property. So, in that condition, tort is something, some wrong activity, some wrong act. So, let us see the usage of that one. The defendant was found liable for the tort of defamation. The tort of defamation, this is the term for spreading false information about the plaintiff, that is rumor, sometimes spreading rumor, right. Okay. So, this is tort of defamation for spreading, for spreading false information about the plaintiff, right. So, that is tort. Further, we shall move up towards the next one, breach of contract. Yes, breach of contract is not following the contract rules and regulations, whatever we have decided. Earlier, two parties have decided. The plaintiff alleges that the defendant's failure to deliver the goods on time constituted a breach of contract. Yes, so the times, uh, maybe the time schedule they have fixed, maybe the uh, type of uh, like payment that they want, sometimes the mode of transport or sometimes the quality goods. So, all these things uh, will come in the uh, breach of, uh, will come in the contract. And if on one ground the person is breaking it, then obviously that would be called a breach of contract and the plaintiff can definitely sue against this defendant. Now, next one, injunction. It is not injection, it is injunctions, right. A court order prohibits a party from engaging in a specific action. So, 
some kind of court order that prohibits stops that prohibits stops banish a party from engaging in a specific action. So, for example, the court issued an injunction preventing the developer from demolishing the historical historic building. Yes, so that could be injunction to stop somebody from doing some action. Settlement, yes, that could be called as compromising negotiation. So, settlement and agreement reached by the parties to resolve a civil dispute without going to trial. That I told you negotiations could be there. Negotiations could be done on the basis of this uh, settlement between two parties. When, whenever there is a negotiation uh, like between two parties, obviously they would talk about and they would try to settle down outside the court itself without a trial, without uh, the witness, without the verdict, without any kind of like uh, accused or all these trial scenes that happen. So, without that they come up with this and this is called settlement. So, for civil law settlements are there, torts, injunctions, breach of contract, many other. So, let us move up to the terms that are used in criminal law. Now, when it comes to criminal law, the crime, the crime that is committed, you can say this is called defendant. The first one, defendant. The individual or entity accused of committing a crime, somebody who has committed a crime that will be called as defendant and facing criminal charges. So, who is facing the criminal charges? That will be defendant. Now, in this condition, let us take the example, John Doe, the defendant is charged with burglary, burglary and a serious criminal offence. Okay? So, this could be used as uh, the defendant, the term that, that could be used for criminal law. Further, we can talk about prosecutor. Since now, we are going to, like it is not out of court settlement, we, are, we have come into the courtroom and there we need prosecutor. There we need prosecutor. Remember in criminal case, prosecutor, the government's attorney responsible, government's attorney responsible for presenting evidence. Evidence means proof, proof and arguing the case against the defendant. So, this prosecutor is from, is, uh, is a government's attorney that is responsible for presenting the evidence, proof against the defendant. Clear? So, prosecutor is from the side of the plaintiff, you can say, or from the side of government. So, let us see the usage of that one. The prosecutor argue, argued that the defendant's action constituted first degree murder. So, the prosecutor argued the defendant's action. What is the action? First degree murder. So, this is prosecutor. Third one, murder. Or, or third one, evidence. Evidence proof. Yes, when we come towards prosecutor side, when it comes to uh, defendant side, obviously you need to have some evidence, some proof also. So, which is, what are they? The information presented in the court to prove, maybe some kind of witness could be there, some kind of uh, uh, you can say objects could be there to prove this article or maybe some clippings would be there, some papers could be there, facts would be there some uh, receipts could be there. So, any kind of uh, you can say uh, words would be provided to it. And then, if I say uh, fingerprints, yes, now they have used fingerprints found at the crime scene are crucial pieces of evidence. So, fingerprints could be used as that, yes, fingerprints, yeah, forensic report, forensic forensic report could be there. So, these are few evidences that could be required for the criminal law. Further, we can talk about misdemeanor. Misdemeanor, the serious criminal offence typically punishable by fines, probations, short jail sentence. For your misconduct, yes, some fines are levied on you, sometimes not, uh, no, uh, yes, on the defendant side, then probation. Some, some probation period is given to you, sometimes some short prison, imprisonment is there. So, some short imprisonment could be there. Let us see, shoplifting. 
is often classified as misdemeanor in many jurisdictions. So, shoplifting is also a kind of uh, criminal law where it could be result into misdemeanor in many jurisdiction. So, next is felony. Felony is again a serious criminal crime, serious criminal offense, yes, crime or offense or misconduct that you have. Felony is something wrong, wrong act like tort you can say, much serious than that, that may result in substantial per prison sentence. So, let us see what felony, armed robbery is considered a felony and carries a potential sentence up to 20 years in prison, right. So, armed robbery, if somebody, if the thief is carrying knife or uh, pistol or something which is harmful, arms, which is arms and armaments in order to hurt somebody, that could be used as a felony and will certainly uh, felony and carries a potential to take the person behind the bars for more than 20 years, clear? So, that is felony, right? So, over here we have prosecutor, we have felony, we have misdemeanor, right? We have bail, now we will come up with bail also. Now, let us come up with Miranda rights. Now, Miranda rights is also the term that could be used in criminal law. A warning given to a suspect in custody, whenever, whosoever is in custody, that warning is given to them, to him, informing them of their right to remain silent, informing them to, of their right to remain silent and to have an attorney present during questioning. So, in that condition, Miranda right could be a person or suspect is not allowed, is, is allowed to stay quiet and could ask his attorney general to speak on his behalf. A warning given to the suspect in custody, informing them of their right to remain silent. You, you have the right to remain silent. So, let us see, before interrogation, the police must read the suspect, their Miranda, Miranda rights to protect their constitutional rights. So, in that condition, what is that Miranda right means? Before giving any kind of uh, uh, verdict, you should consult your, uh, maybe consult your uh, lawyer or attorney present there during the questions, present during the questioning hour. So, this is Miranda warning, remember, yes. So, this is again a very important thing because we are talking about serious crimes over here. We are talking about uh, criminal law, criminal cases and I am going to come up with several other cases in this case, uh, like suppose uh, Recently, we are talking, uh, we, uh, I would like to tell you about Indra, Indra Sani case, which is popularly known as the Mandal case, the Mandal case, right. So, this is again an example of, not of criminal court, but uh, of very, uh, very, very landmark, you can say, landmark case law. So, this is again like worth referring over here, I said. So, when it comes to landmark case laws, this one is particularly very much like highlighting, highlighting in such a manner because Indra Sani case, the Mandal case, which is secondly known as Mandal case, here this is according to article, article 16, section 4, which provided the reservation of jobs in favor, reservation reservation shani reservation of jobs in favor of backward classes right have been examined thoroughly by the supreme court so these classes have been examined thoroughly by the SC, Supreme Court, right. So, I would like to mention this landmark case of Indra Sani case versus or which is actually known as the Mandala case where the, where the plaintiff actually complain against the reservation of jobs. Uh, reservation of jobs against the, uh, in the backward classes. So, this is what uh, we, I would like to tell you that whenever we are talking about any type of crime, any type of uh, case, 
please be very much concerned about using certain type of uh, like reasons why this case uh, took place, why plaintiff is actually coming up with a, with, with a complaint against the defendant. Is there any kind of logic behind it or any kind of reason behind it that has to be there. So, let us talk about, about this next one that is jury. So, what is jury? Jury a group of individuals selected to hear evidence in the criminal trial and render a verdict, yes. So, in that condition a criminal trial and render a verdict some kind of like statement, the jury deliberated for several hours before returning a verdict of not guilty in the murder trial. So, they discussed and gave the unanimous decision that this person stands uh, safe or this person is innocent. So, yes, when it comes to, ju when it comes to criminal law, jury, misdemeanor, Miranda rights, uh, then further we talk about felony. Then uh, in case laws, yes, we have, uh, we had bland, uh, plaintiff, defendant, torts, yes, negotiation, settlement. So, let us move up to the next part where we talk about the commonalities between civil law and criminal law. Although we think that these two are two, two parts of the same coin, right, but the coin is same, you know, they are law. So, you have to understand this fact, there has to be some kind of commonalities. So, what are they? Commonalities between civil law and criminal law exist despite their fundamental differences, right, because it depends on serious and non-serious part. In purpose and procedure also, we have discussed about the procedure and we have discussed about the purpose also along with terminologies. These commonalities stem, stem, sprout from sprout from their shared goal of ensuring justice because they have, they both actually target, they both have the target of ensuring justice, providing judgment and that is the reason and creating a peaceful atmosphere all around and resolving disputes within the legal framework. So, their purpose is to resolve the dispute between them. Now, when we talk about commonalities, let us talk about uh, their aspects that on which grounds they stand equal to each other. First of all, legal proceedings in court, that is a commonality. Let us talk about both civil and criminal cases are typically resolved in court through legal proceedings. Moreover, but in most cases, civil cases, civil law uh, or civil cases, they come or they, they are settled outside the court only. But yes, they both have to be dealt with uh, like in court through legal proceedings. For example, in civil case, the plaintiff sues a defend, defendant for monetary compensation. Obviously, as I told you, Alice versus XYZ company, construction company. Then that is for monetary compensation due to breach of contract. So, in that condition, the other person will also go to the magistrate, will also go to the court. In a criminal case, the state charges the defendant with theft for stealing property when it, vis, it is with the armed forces, with the armed, uh, maybe with arms and armaments, if he has gone for stealing or for theft, theft that becomes more uh, serious. So, remember these two goes for court, point number one. Point number two, which you can say is burden of proof. They both want evidence, they both want proof because without proof, without evidence, nothing can be solved. Proof, that is commonality. The burden of the proof and the standards differ. For example, in civil cases, burden of proof is typically on the plaintiff, whosoever is actually doing this task or whosoever is actually complaining, that person will definitely collect all the evidences, all the proofs. So, it is his task to go on with that. And you and who must show my preponderance of the evidence that the defendant is liable. So, he is the, the plaintiff is going to fix up the evidence to show that this person is, the defendant is actually responsible for all the uh, mishap. In the criminal cases, prosecution bears the burden of proving. I told you prosecution, who is prosecution, who will be in the, on the side of prosecution? Prosecution would be on the side of the government the government's side and if somebody stands uh, like on the side of plaintiff, then definitely if not the government side, then obviously 
like uh, any individual lawyer could be hired by the plaintiff's side. So, proving the defendant's guilt beyond the reasonable doubt. So, with with on the basis of reasonable doubt, the person would be considered as the criminal. So, yes, uh, next one is evidence and witnesses. Proof I told you evidence and witnesses both are required in this. Evidence involve the presentation and of witnesses and in both the cases we need that evidence. In civil case, medical records are required, expert testimony is required to prove it. In criminal cases, witnesses may, somebody who is the eyewitness, who is the eyewitness, right, may testify the defendant's action during the alleged crime. So, it could be any person who would be taken to that field and to that particular area to, to see that, to see the validity of that person that oh, this is the particular person who did this crime. Further legal representation, in both the cases we need a lawyer. We need a lawyer who can definitely fight against those cases, that is legal representation. Commonality, parties in both civil and criminal cases have the right to legal representation. They have the right to legally represent each other, legally represent themselves. In civil case, a plaintiff may hire an attorney to represent their interest, right? They may hire an attorney to represent an, their interest. In a criminal, defendants have the right to, ha, to an attorney which may be provided by the state if they cannot afford one, right? So, in that condition, even prosecution and from the defendant side also, if the defendant is unable to uh, hire any attorney from his side, definitely that person can hire, the state can hire that attorney from their own side, if the person is unable to hire any attorney. So, from plaintiff side also and from defendant side also, right. So, remember if uh, the person is unable to do that, this person the other, the government side will also or state side would also uh, come up with that attorney. So, let us move up to the appeals progress process. So, we have learned like uh, uh, while talking about the process, while talking about the procedure, while talking about the objectives, we have seen that there are four reasons where they both are common. They proof, evidence, sometimes legal uh, prosecutions, they all will go to that, right. And then uh, they will definitely come up with compensations. Now, coming up with appeals process, we are going to talk about appeals process which becomes uh, the commonality. So, both civil and criminal cases can be appealed higher courts. So, they could be appealed in higher courts if there are errors or disagreements with the lower, lower courts, right. So, in both the cases, they could be, they could definitely go up to the higher court also to, to find or to seek justice, right. Whereas, like uh, uh, this is a common part in both, okay. So, in either case party dissatisfied, if the party is dissatisfied with first decision of the lower court, then definitely it can move up to the other side. The trial court's ruling may file an appeal to seek a review of the case by an appellant court. Is that clear everyone? Right, my dear learners? Yes. So, you have to understand this part that appeal is important. And if the person is, if the plaintiff is dissatisfied, that person can definitely go trial court's ruling. They can definitely uh, stand against uh, that ruling party, that rule, that, that uh, verdict and then further can appeal in high court also. So, further, yes, further we have mediation and settlements at the end for criminal cases also and for civil cases also there are few settlements outside the court. So, mediation and settlements are there, commonality parties in both civil and criminal cases may attempt to reach the settlement and resolution. Civil case, the plaintiff and defendant may engage in negotiations and reach a settlement agreement. In some criminal cases, I said some, in not, in all, not in all criminal cases. Why is it like that? Because in some, if somebody has committed a crime of murder, that person would not be relieved from the government side. No matter if he or she is ready to go on with any kind of negotiation, but still this is, uh, you. nobody can spare that person, remember. So, in some criminal cases only, 
prosecutors and defendants may negotiate plea bargains right so you must understand this particular thing with that with that and judge's role what is the role of the judge in this case i would like to definitely tell you judge's role is actually common in civil and criminal when i talk about the like one of the important case that uh, i would like to come up now is the longest the longest civil case in india if i talk about the recent material the longest civil case in india that is the calcutta the calcutta hc high court has disposed the barhampur barhampur bank case and in that bank case which was filed in 1951 kolkata can you imagine 1951 kolkata and india's oldest litigation this is india's oldest litigation where you won't believe that even the judge was born one decade after one decade after the court was after the uh, case was filed that means 1961 that court was that that case was filed and whereas the judge who gave the decision right now is actually like was born after one decade so and this is something really very interesting where 72 years at 72 years you know was disposed of last week by the bench of country's oldest high court whose current justice prakash shrivastava who is justice prakash shrivastava who i was referring to shrivastava so this is the thing where judge's role is also very important right so commonality in both is this is civil and criminal cases judge presides over judge presides over the proceedings and ensures the proper applications of the law many of you might be planning to be uh, to clear pcsj over here right and this is the reason why i'm just trying to tell you that even judge's role is also very much incomparable and very much vital plays a vital role in this in civil case judge may issue rulings on admissibility of evidence in criminal case the judge instructs the jury on the applicable law so in this condition judge's role is also very important while talking about the commonality further we can talk about legal rights and procedures in legal rights and procedures yes of course you all should know that it is based on some statutes it is based on some regulations it is based on some legal pre uh, precedents so this is what both the civil and criminal law are bound by legal rights and procedures that protect parties involved example in civil law due process ensures fair treatment and in criminal law the accused has the right to remain silent the right to remain silent not incriminate themselves that is i told you in the previous one miranda right miranda right is even the accused can remain silent till his attorney is not there with him while questioning so this is miranda right right so this is the term that could be used in criminal law let's move up to the next one that is the glossary part could be the last one almost so glossary is compensatory damages this is the common thing maybe sometimes monetary awards monetary awards in the form of maybe civil cases in the form of civil cases some kind of compensation of some some amount in monetary terms so that is a kind of uh, compensation negotiation could be done settlement further defamation defamation making false statements about someone that harm their reputation potentiality leading towards civil so lawsuit so remember defamation is declining somebody or demeaning somebody's uh, like status in the society robbery next is robbery that is a uh, criminal act involving use of force intimidation to take property and valuable from another person further public intoxication public intoxication misdemeanor offenses related of being visibly intoxicated in public places 
may be using liquor, drugs or marijuana, any other thing like that. So, public intoxication, kidnapping, sometimes drink and drive cases are there and uh, others like this. Kidnapping is also a felony, felony is wrong act involving the abduction or unlawful restraint of an individual against their will. So, this is what a uh, few uh, terms that would certainly be a part of our uh, civil law as well as criminal law. So, this is the thing at the end I would like to come up with the conclusion part where we all have to be to, very, to be very precise and understand the validity of this part that how much this uh, these laws are important. If I will if anybody would be able to understand anything like uh, uh, like uh, maybe the importance of these, the differences of between them, procedural difference between them, sometimes the objectives of them, all these things create a different kind of uh, you can say interpretation. So, keep on reading a lot, keep, keep on reading the research articles of uh, judiciaries of, of major judges around there, maybe like their interpretations, they are very important. And further, at the end I would like to say that uh, proper understanding the distinction between case laws and criminal laws, this is actually a fundamental in navigating the legal system. When, when you know about these laws, you would be able to play games, you would be able to actually come with full data and with prepared minds, right. Even Narayan Murthy says that, what, what does he say? That God favors the prepared brains, God favors the prepared minds. Now, do you really think that your mind is ready to be a part of this lawyers, this, this legal periphery or this legal arena, this legal family? Yes, of course. If you read a lot, if you gather information about case laws, criminal laws, statutes, some regulations, some legal precedences, obviously you would certainly be able to prove your excellence in that condition. So, this is a navigating, this, these are navigating fundamentals to the legal system. Next, these case laws provide guidance based on past judicial decisions that I told you legal precedences. Some landmark cases are there, A.K. Gopalan case, then you have uh, 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 like uh, Kesham Nanda's case, so many cases are there, you can definitely refer them. And uh, further, yes, of course, uh, there when I talk about uh, some kind of uh, civil law cases, civil law cases, uh, in that condition, three years could be the time, three years could be the time for all the kind of punishments that could be given. And uh, in the under, under CRPC, and under CRPC, yes, you can understand this fact, CRPC Code of Criminal Procedure. This has decided that uh, your, your uh, basically your crime could be of two types, could be uh, cognizable, could be cognizable and could, could be non-cognizable. So, when it is cognizable, FIR will be filed, FIR that is section 154 and uh, when this is not there, then section non-serious crime is there, then section 155 and the person would be sent to magistrate, right? The copy would go to magistrate, here magistrate, right everyone? So, this is what like you must understand uh, cognizable and non-cognizable. In this condition, this thing becomes very much important. So, now both are integrated, integral components of law. One is a crime against an individual or, society, or uh, the firm, second one is a crime towards the society. So, this is again a very important one. Working together to ensure justice is served and legal principles are consistently applied. Legal professionals must adapt to ut at utilizing case laws to interpret and argue cases effectively while also being well versed in criminal laws to address and prosecute uh, offenses. So, criminal law and case laws, they both are really very much important. In this case, like let me uh, come up with several references that I have used. 
uh, throughout these lectures like I have referred this book jurisprudence theory and context uh, by Sweet and Maxwell. Then further I have used this uh, companion to contemporary political philosophy Rutledge. Then uh, I have used this introduction to comparative law understanding the jurisprudence and introduction to legal theory. Further I have referred to law as a leap of faith Oxford University Press. So and and few more. So, I'm, I would like to request all my dear learners to refer these books for better understanding and honing your skills of writing. They are uh, of Oxford uh, University Press, Zuckerberg, Man, Criminal Evidence, then Criminal Law, Text and Materials, then we can, uh, you can refer to Criminal Law, Text, Cases and Materials by Oxford and uh, here Philosophy of Law, Bibliography. So, these are few things that you can definitely refer all my dear learners. So, I think like the whole lecture, the whole thing have opened up your mind, prepared your minds for better understanding of criminal law and case laws. And in that condition when you talk about criminal law and civil laws, you must know about constitutional law also because they are actually you can say the two parts of the same coin, you cannot segregate them, yeah, you cannot segregate them, they live in, uh, they, they run parallel to each other, right, they run parallel to each other, but obviously they would not be able to meet somewhere, but there are some commonalities also, some commonalities of terms also, but their objectives and purpose are different, okay. So, with this note, I am Dr. Devya Gupta, an assistant professor at GLA University, signing off for now and wish you all the best. Glanville Maxwell said that this uh, without reading nobody can uh, would be able to acquire whatever dreams you have. So, please be alert, aware, agile about all the legal acts, about all the legal uh, like regulations that are there that forms up some statutes. So, please be alert and aware, keep on writing and reading a lot, run 5 learn 5 case laws, learn 5 regulations, read a lot and then reflect a lot. One time reading is not perfect, is not sufficient. You can definitely talk about reading and mesmerizing them twice, thrice, that will certainly lead towards the perfection part, okay. So, thank you everyone, have a good day and enjoy your time with learning and reading, yeah, okay. Dr. Divya Gupta here signing off for now.